All right, folks, we have a really fast and easy one here, but you have to be using the correct um, formula for this method here, which is stamping on top of glossy cardstock. Okay, that's just a standard glossy cardstock, gold cardstock, I should say, metallic cardstock. Uh, we need to stamp on something that's going to dry on this. This is not like a printable vinyl sticker paper or something of that sort, okay? But just like the printable vinyl sticker papers, we have to use a water-based ink on here. Um, okay, now that being said, if you have something like a, a gold stays on or something like that, that might work as well. Okay, but I'm using the Brilliance pigment inks here that are fast drying, but they're not going to adhere to this type of um, cardstock, so that's where the spray fixative comes in. But let's just do, let's just start off right here. This is going to be a really fast and easy one. Um, I just did a test print of it here just to make sure that everything would work. I haven't done one of these in quite some time, so um, I wanted to test it out, okay. But I really love the combination of white and gold on top of gold. I think it makes for a really elegant co uh, combination. I've done black impressions on here before too. Um, probably, I've done it using stays on inks for things like reflection cards, but I've just done, um, I don't know, just the, the, you know, the main body of the card in um, stays on before as well, but that's black stays on, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp out this large moon here using a white brilliance. This is the Moonlight White. And we'll throw this up here in the corner. Watch out when using um, these thick styles of ink, especially on top of pretty much non-porous surfaces, okay? Because it's, it's a thick ink, so when you stamp it down, it's easy to kind of skew it a little bit because it is a thick um, style of ink that's not absorbing into the surface, so it's completely surface oriented here, okay? So I'm, you know, you got to be kind of definitive, you know, when you're um, laying down this, you know, when you go down there, don't kind of, you know, change your mind, otherwise it kind of skews. All right, now that being said, if it skews on you, just wipe it off and it you can just start over again. It's not like a stays on ink that's going to dry instantly on here and it's water-based so you can take like a like a little bit of a slight you know not not sopping wet but slightly moist paper towel and just wipe it right off and it'll come off hello patty and uh, sandy how are you okay so i have a truly um fast scene here i always say that and then it's like uh i keep I don't know, I get really into it and I keep adding more and more things and it's like suddenly we're on to a card for like, you know, an hour. <laughs> but this one's really fast. It's, it's practically just making the impressions. Okay, gold ink on my uh, night cabin uh, right, okay? All right, now I just re-inked this gold pad because it was super, super dry. And I got a really good impression out of it on my test print here. But maybe this is a little bit too much ink. Yeah. Let me see here. Let me see if I can just kind of... Sometimes I kind of go like this, if it's especially if it's dye-based ink. Uh, I'm just going to go with this one right here. I think I put a little bit too much ink on this one. It's very surface oriented even when you ink up, you know, directly on the, uh, on a dry, fairly dry um, uh, pad. All right, so, okay, now this one's really super juicy. I don't know if you can tell that with the gold ink. So again, when I lay this down, there's going to be a lot of ink on the surface here. And then when you stamp it onto your surface, you know, it's not absorbing into that paper at all, you know, this gold right here. So you want to just make sure that that puddle of ink that's created in between stamp and service doesn't like spread out too much or that you skew it. Okay, so let me see if I can get this in here just fine. Okay. And just light, even pressure, okay? You don't need to press harder. If you press harder, it's what it's going to do is it's going to 
squeeze out the ink from underneath the stamp onto the surrounding, and then you might get kind of a, um, a, a little bit of a blobby image that's filled in in the tighter details, okay? But just, you know, adequate pressure, okay, on this one. Pressing harder is not going to transfer the ink more. It's, it's, it might do, it might work the opposite than that. But there's a lot of surface area in, area in here. So that being said, you still want to get plenty of surface um, in a, a center pressuring um, on the stamp. Okay. Now, okay, so the brilliant sink is, it's faster drying than your typical um, pigment inks, but you still, it, it's not drying fast you know, in terms of it drying, you know, the chance of it drying in a longer impression like this, like with a solvent ink. So um, I just let it sit there for a little bit to allow it to kind of start setting up and to transfer like that. And then uh, when you release it, just, you know, be careful upon release and you got your image in there, okay? Now that's a really thick, I that's a lot of ink on there, okay? I'll show you my first impression because I've I've spray sealed that for my final touches on here. This one I'm going to have to let, you know, kind of dry for a little bit. Okay, now what I'm doing right here is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add in some foreground trees right in here. And I could use the same trees from this image right here, but I'm just going to go with my other cabin here. my other night cabin, just so I don't have to clean that stamp right now, that first one. Okay, so I'm just using the top trees off of this cabin. Um, I don't want I don't want to get that cabin into the mix, so I'm going to put my finger roughly where the rooftop ends um, and the trees begin right here, and I'm just going to be careful not to stamp. If I stamp a little bit of the roof, it's going to be okay, but I don't want too much of it. And we'll go like this. Okay, now this is where, if I used a little bit less gold ink, it would have been better, because I'm stamping like this wet, you know, uh, white into the sopping wet gold right here. So I, I'm just hoping that this white looks like it's over the top of that gold. Um, there was less ink on this white impression than the gold, so I don't know, the gold might dominate. We'll see. Even if it does, it might look okay. Maybe I'll leave this one down for a little bit longer here. I think I'm going to add in some additional um, little rocks along this shoreline right here. So what we have right here is white. That's supposed to look like it's on top of gold, we'll see. <laughs> And then the gold is on top of the white right here, that moon like that. So you're just kind of layering a darker hue in between two layers of, you know, lighter hue. But the thing about that gold is when it catches the light, though, it might be lighter than white because it's going to be more reflective. We'll see. Yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, that gold shows through it a little bit right there. I can add in some additional white ink onto that, and I'll do that after I spray seal this and it dries, but I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, um, let's go with another one over here. This is overlapping that little bit of gold on that shoreline. Not too much, though. So, I, in other words, I won't need to hold this down for as long. And... Let's go for a little bit like over here. One of the things about stamping on this type of paper like this is that you have to be careful where you touch this because that's still um, really sopping wet um, with the ink. Okay, let's see here. And let's go for a word stamp right here. We just have moon. So when I'm doing this white like that, I find it it's important to bring that element into the other areas of the uh, design. Sorry about my head getting in the way. Okay, light even pressure. We have moon like that. 
some of that gold shows through a little bit on the edges. I, I really like that look um, when that happens. Um, you can heat set this too, but if you do, just be aware that if you keep the um, heat in one area for a little bit too long, this gold foil, it, it's probably different for different brands, like the Recollections one, I don't think would do it, but it might, but it kind of rainbows a little bit, which you can kind of do um, purposefully um, for, you know, some sort of kind of special effect, and it's pretty interesting. Um, I haven't done it enough, though. I've done it en enough times to where I got that kind of rainbowing thing, but I, I, I'm not really, I don't have a lot of control over it, though. Okay, adding a little bit of these little rocks down here in the water like that all right but we have this right here okay i'll show you what i'm gonna do with this one now i had to prepare for this little li quick live stream here because this does need to dry and then i need to spray seal it okay so we have that so this is one that i already stamped out see this is see how globby that gold ink is on this one this is you know a better kind of impression i didn't have it so caked on you know with the uh with the ink there but this is a little bit of a crisper impression right here okay so this has been spray sealed okay and i don't know if it's completely tacked down eh, it looks like it is pretty well okay so i spray sealed this with um a workable fixative okay I didn't used to think that that one would be the ideal one for this type of gold paper, um, but I think it works really well. Um, it dries really fast, and it doesn't influence the gold as much as I thought it would, but it does make it a little bit more frosted gold. So this is, I matted it on the same gold here, so I don't know if you can tell the textural difference. It's, it's, it's not that much, though. It's less than... Um, your uv resistant clear krylon crystal clear something like that okay and you can see the brilliant sink you know it it holds up pretty well against that spray sealant okay because this brilliant sink again it's a water-based ink so when you hit it with that you know that xylene or whatever they have in this um fixative to you know make it a sprayable type of um, acrylic it doesn't really influence your um Im images um, because of uh, that, uh, you know, that difference in whatever chemistry. Okay, so I, I, I needed to do this one first because I needed to spray seal this because I'm going to add in some light in those windows there. Hello, Cynthia. How are you? Hello, Megan L. So really fast. What are we on right now? So it's like, I don't know, like the 13 minute mark right here. That's, you know, pretty much done right there. You just have to kind of let it sit. I had it sitting outside, too, because I, unlike, like, dye-based inks or something like that, these brilliant inks aren't going to fade out as as far as I know, you know. Um, and then, like I said, then I spray-sealed it, so allow it to dry. I didn't allow these ones to dry completely. I, I probably had it outside for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. But, okay, so we're going to bring in interior illumination into this. So we have this white up here, and then we have the gold impression on top of it. We have that white element over here. We have our trees down here, and if you can see that some of that gold kind of shows through some of those areas. It just depends on how much ink transfers, but if it doesn't, see how it has that different shade of gold up there? And that's one of the things that's really cool about stamping white over the top of you know, some sort of metallic is that the metallic kind of shows through a little bit, which I think integrates the imagery into the surface a little bit more by having some of that, you know, influence on there. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so that being said, so I have some of that gold that's showing through the white. Now I'm going to put some white back into the gold in the gold um, element, okay? which is the cabin. Okay, so I'm gonna try to, let me see, let me shake this up a little bit. Uh, 
All right, so let me see here. I need to be careful about placing my hand right here just in case some of those trees are still a little bit damp. I don't think they are, but let me put this over here just in case. It's hard to see this because I, it, on my angle, I have a bunch of light like shining up in my eyes right here. Like right here, this area right here, it's glaring up in my eyes. So I'm having a trouble um, kind of focusing here a little bit. Okay, let me see. Okay, now this acrylic paint pen will stick to anything. You can, you can use it on glass or plastic or whatever, okay? So just kind of get it flowing a little bit. And I'm going into my window here. Man, I almost feel a little bit dizzy with the uh, that light kind of uh, glaring in my face right here, my eyes. All right, so there's my little kind of interior lit cabin. All right, did I get all that? Oh, okay, here's something to down here too. Like so. Okay, I have like that. Let's bring a little bit of that lighting onto a couple of the objects underneath that light. Maybe I'll have it reflecting down here in the water a little bit. Just doing like a couple little dots down here. About like so. And there we have our little quick, I don't know, it's like a 15 minute card or something like that. But I think this type of thing can be really dynamic. Let me do something right here. I really like that. Um, that gold ink uh, pebbles down in that water too. Let me take that. Let me blot that off a little bit. I have way too much ink on that pad. Now one of the things I think I've done in the past too is I think I've taken um, some ink on a cotton ball and I've added it down here like a little bit of mist or cloud. Um, let me try that here. All right, now here's one of those things that, you know, where we always go a little bit over. It's like, here's a 10 minute card. Oh, changed my mind. Here's a 20 minute card. Let me test this out right here because I want to see. Cotton, cotton ball. Okay. And then let's add in a little bit of atmospheric, you know, mist. And let's see if we can apply that with a certain degree of, uh, I don't know, whatever touch, okay? Meaning, for me, that just means removing a lot of the ink on here or not stamping it out with a super juicy one, okay? Tapping it out like that. Look at this. See, I can barely see anything right there. Okay, that might be a little bit, wait, you know, too dry here. That's a little bit too much. Okay, so see that right there? That's kind of the um, consistency you want. Let me see here. I think that'll be okay. Um, if you do this, it's good to have a piece of, like, scratch paper uh, next to you. Unless you've been do unless you've done this a while and you kind of get the feel of it, but let's put a little bit of this fog texturing around in here. And let's see how that'll look.
a little bit like that. Okay. I think I can go up here a little bit more too. I'm going to put a very light amount like that. Okay. Right over here, I might have added a little bit too much. So I'm just going to... Now remember, I've spray sealed this. So I can just go in here like this. And I'm tapping to remove some of it. Like that. It's a little bit more atmosphere in there. I, I might have put too much atmosphere. <laughs> It's really reflecting a lot of that light in there, so I didn't I didn't really put very much of it down, but it's kind of capturing a lot of that. It's reflecting a lot of light in there, so it looks a little bit um, diffused. So I'm going to go in here and put a little bit of extra highlighting on some things so it got a little bit diffused so you you just go back in and add a little bit of crisp element into uh, the area so i'm adding a little bit more of this white to integrate it a little bit more okay so see that right on there I didn't even think about it on these trees here in the foreground. I think this will look cool. Again, because it's not a pure white that's stamped out right down there. It's a little bit more of a combination of the gold foil underneath. But anyways, okay, so a pretty quick and easy scene like that. There's your cabin like that in there. So you just sandwich some form in there. Doesn't have to be the cabins, could be, you know, the lakeside cove or something like that. I really want to test out that moon in there, but I think the moon looks pretty cool like that. But this is a really fast card. Now, if you're doing this, if I wasn't thinking about it, you know, if I knew exactly what I was going to do in here, I think I can get this card done in about 15 minutes. But um, it's really fun to play around with these uh, metallics on metallic papers. So I really like the um, the silver um, brilliance pad. It's one of my favorite silvers. Um, I think there's multiple silvers that they have in their line. I think it's, I think it's starlight. Yeah, it's starlight silver. So they have the starlight silver, and I really like using this one on top of silver cardstock. And then I, again, I use it in the combination with white, I think. And um, you can do all kinds of things. This one's a platinum planet, and that looks really silvery or aluminum-ish. Um, I didn't like that one quite as much as the Starlight Silver when it came, you know, to the combination of, uh, you know, the metallic surfaces with this. So um, anyway, I, I think it makes for a pretty elegant... Um, looking media surface combinations to do those things. And it's kind of unconventional too. Um, a lot of people just, you know, we don't stamp on top of metallic card stocks. I really love it for the um, reflection cards. I always show these uh, reflection cards because I think it's really dynamic, but um, you know, just these, you know, these mirrored types of surfaces really make for some really fun opportunities with them. Um, stamping and of course those metallics you know are, are really great just for um you know framing pieces like this i really love um framing off my uh uh you know my wood grain papers and uh the antiqued style pre-printed papers like that um with the gold but you can also take it and stamp on like this, and I think it's really fun. I think it looks really pretty dimensional, and it's just, you can't do very much on them, so for the most part, it's just making the impressions and just leaving it as is. As is. But remember to incorporate um, things like your workable fixatives, if need be, into the mix. So sometimes what you might do is you might want to stamp something out and maybe you might need to spray seal it down, okay? And that locks that layer of imagery down. 
so that when you're stamping over the top of it, like this one over here, I, I could tell that this one, I really inked up my ink pad too much. So see, so you get that bleed through of that wet ink on there. But all I would have needed to do, can do it on this live stream, but I knew that was really super thick and slathered. So I had a feeling that it was gonna bleed through this white right here, okay? So I could have just locked that down with a layer of workable fixative and then stamp these images out on top of that because it would have been um, dry to stamp on. Then you would get this nice crisp portion of this top tree in here. Now, if that happens right there, all I need to do is just go back in. After this is dried and spray sealed, I'll just, you know, put some of this white paint pen right back in there just so we don't have that bleed through gold in there. So just incorporate your sealant into the mix and just look at things as um, like layers in there and um, you know you can add in things like uh, I've been doing a lot of those light beam types of things um, on top of this foil right here um, you just add a really light layer of it down there and you'll have um, a lot of variations of different values of gold on there because you're kind of muting out some of that gold and putting that white beam on there. You can see in my metallic um, uh, playlist on this channel, um, there's a bunch of uh, the gold um, styles of applications in there. I think I've even done things like, I don't know if I stamped at my fences with a cabin or a church in the background in white, and that was really fun. I think I had like beams running across there. Um, in gold, so that was uh, really fun to do. It made it pretty dimensional, but I, don't, I can't even remember. It's been, you know, it's probably been a year since I've uh, been doing some of that, but I think a lot of the early um, metallics on this channel are on the gold um, cardstock, and that's just using the brilliance on uh, white and gold on, on it like that. Hello, Debbie, we're all done here. But this is like a really fast card. It's like one of the faster cards like that. So, um, yeah. So anyways, just gold. Uh, I wanted to test out, uh, I want to test this moon out in just a lot of different scenarios here. Um, trying to get the glare out there for you, but I don't know. It, like I said, it's, it's pretty fun. You know, some of these um, different types of techniques are just kind of on, on, existing colored backgrounds it's practically just making the impressions on them and not doing too much more like i don't know if that pigment ink like fog in there looks good or not i might kind of wipe it off <laughs> but um yeah it makes for a fun little technique on there uh to try out um i was really happy with the way that moon worked out too because see when you're stamping like this in white too or in gold like this, um, you're stamping out the imagery basically in a reverse um, value than what it was intended to do. You know, so you you know you were usually stamping this out in black on a lighter background, and that's the same thing that Airy and the Moon should. You know, it, it's really uh, more of a you know, this area down here is light and this area is dark up here. So, but I think it looks reasonably well. And I like these trees down here in the white too. So, I don't know, play around with some stuff. That might be kind of interesting too. So we see this something like this. We might be able to stamp out this cabin like this in this white ink, but on top of things like, I don't know, yeah, gold holographics or something like that or the, I don't know if I have some right here, um, some of the reflex, uh, recollections foils um, are fun, like something like this, or a blue one would be really fun, I think. Oh, the purple would be kind of cool too, but um, that type of imagery right in there, just done in, I think it was white that I did that in. Um, and then, I splatter painted the uh, the sky with some um, so white imagery, so everything's like reverse imagery, and then you splatter paint up in the sky with some white stars, and that makes some really fast cards. It was like super easy. You're just making impressions on there. Um, 
uh, someone on like Facebook, Facebook said, ah, I would, you know, I would, what I wouldn't give or something like that to be able to stamp us, you know, or something, a card like this one day. And I'm thinking all I did was I just stamped the imagery. There was like zero technique, which, which I guess is good in some ways, but you're trying to teach people how to do it. And it's just making the impressions on a foil and it, it looked pretty good, you know, and it, but, but it was just, <laughs> you know, it was as simple as a card gets, you know, you're just making the impression that that was it, you know, and splatter painting was easy. I guess the opposite would be, oh yeah, what a, you know, what a, what, that's, that's kind of a, a nice and, you know, super easy car, you know, car looking card to do, you know, uh, you know, a kindergartner can do it. <laughs> All right. But anyways, gold on gold. See, a lot of you have, uh, some metallic, uh, card stocks in your collection. I would, you know, give it a try, especially if you have some of the, uh, some inks that'll work on it. So we did this right here too, and you can try um, other things too. I don't have a uh, brilliance pigment inks or something like that, but something like this, maybe in, you know, some embossing, you know, might work too, or something like that. Um, and that would be good. Uh, but again, on the embossing on the metallics, just be careful about um, holding that um, heat in one area for too long. So. Hey, someone here on the chat, you know, probably told me or on Facebook or something like that. They said, um, cause I hadn't done a lot of embossing before, but they taught, you know, they showed me to, uh, or told me to, you know, emboss, you know, heat from the back or heat from the back and front too. And, you know, you might have less, um, uh, bowing and, um, you know, some of that, you know, if, if it's on the metallic that, um, rainbowing or whatever you call it of, of that color that happens with um, some of the metallic um, stocks out there. So uh, let's see. Talk about a spray gun. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, this is a quarter page card, Debbie. So four and a quarter by five and a half, but then I just matted it, okay? Now, I pre-matted this before this um, video here, this live stream, so I just stamped that out like that, but I had one pre-stamped out and then spray-sealed with a workable fixative. By the way, this is the Rust-Oleum handle. I really like um, putting these things on my uh, cans. I, just, I find it easier to... Uh, spray and then I you know I don't get it on my fingertips sometimes when I'm you know holding the tip if I'm doing a bunch of cards so um, I don't know these really come in handy right here just one little tip okay for anyone that's watching um, I've had a lot of these over the years and sometimes I get lazy and I just I take this and I shake up the can like this okay don't do that you know especially if the cans kind of heavy because um, this one's really light, but um, shake it up holding the can like this, okay? Don't shake it up by the handle because this right here could potentially crack, okay? Especially if it's, you know, a brand new can or whatever, a three-quarter filled or something like that because, you're you know, you're shaking this like this and it's putting strain around this um, area right here. So if you don't do that, and I don't do it anymore, but um, I just shake it up like this and I've probably been using this handle right here for the last 10 years. Yeah, you know, I have a couple of them for my different things. Like I use it on my, um, uh, I think I have two of these handles, but here's the other thing that I use too. I use the Super 77 multi-purpose adhesive. Um, and then I tacked these two layers down here, the gold, and I tacked it onto the white and I trimmed it. And then I tacked you know, I use the Super 77 on that again. You just need a little bit of, you know, a thin layer of this, and it gives you a really, you know, even bond and permanent one. Um, it's kind of a hassle. It's, you know, we use our tape, things like that too. But sometimes when I use my tape runner, and it feels real solid, but then, I don't know, like I, after, it's like I see it after like a few months or something like that, and I don't know, whatever expansion and contraction with, you know, heat or something like that and moisture cont or whatever uh humidity in the air and it seems like you know it's my cards aren't as 
you know, flat and uh, adhered as, as they, as I thought they were when I first um, adhered them. So like one can of this, remember you don't use like a huge amount of it, but one thing like this can give you, I don't know, it's like a hundred cards or something like that, you know, kind of double matted like that. So um, just always spray outside. <laughs> I hate, I kind of hate using this stuff. So it's, as I'm saying, it gets, I spray it and it's like in the air. So don't spray it like on a super, I, I like spraying it like late at night, you know, if it's like in the daytime, it seems like it, you know, it spreads around and I can feel it kind of like on the hairs of my uh, back of my hand, you know, arm sometimes, but um, it really gives it a nice clean, you know, super sealed bond, like permanent bond on there. All right, folks, uh, so probably a, like a 15 minute card or something like that if you don't include, um, you know, the spray ceiling on there. But, uh, you know, a night cabin in gold like that. So, um, I don't know, fun things to do. I need to splatter paint on here though, too. <laughs> oh, that would be good. So if you do something like this too, it'd be cool to, if I splatter painted the whole thing, like this, it could be like this winter type of thing with a little bit of like light snowfall over the whole surface. And then you'd be incorporating some more of that little white um, element into there. And it would push that um, gold back in there. It would kind of integrate it really nicely. So, yeah. All right, folks. Thank you for checking this out. Hope you like it. More uh, whatever test prints to come. I. I'll try um, some uh, another video here, but I'll do some different um, colored foils, you know, with the same type of uh, technique right here. I did it with the snowy covered bridge, I think it was. I think I did three of them. And then I used, um, I think, some crystals in the sky too for stars. So I think I'm going to do it same type of thing. And use these cabins in there. I think that'll be really fun. All right. Fast and quick and easy. <laughs>